Welcome everyone to Mail Fuzz TV, I am Peter and today I'm going to be talking about The Twilight Zone Season 5 Episode 33. It's called The Brain Center at Whipples. So spoilers for the episode as always. So as soon as I read the description for this one last episode, I, you know, I knew it was going to be this ultra relevant story that had aged well, or not well, depending on how you look at it, I suppose. But it's a story about this this owner or of a company or a manager of a branch of a company who is replacing all of the workers with computers, with machines that can do the work. And he's very enthusiastic about all the, the wages that he isn't going to have to pay, about all the sick leave that isn't going to be taken, about the breaks that aren't going to be, the, the inconvenience of maternity, things like that. Very enthusiastic about it. Uh, but of course the episode explores the effect of this on at least a couple of the people who are who are going to be affected and lose their jobs. And then the ultimate irony by the end that eventually this man, Mr. Whipple, eventually is going to be booted out and replaced by a machine as well. And I think that was always going to be the ending to this story, is that it was it was going to come further up the food chain until it got to him and then he's going to be gone. And he has to deal with the fact that he's been replaced with a machine and now he feels what everyone else has felt. He gets some level of just desserts and experiences what everyone else feels. So when we get to the end and he makes his quick little speech about, you know, he, they just discarded me. I'm a man, not a machine. Don't they, don't they value what, what we are? Which, you know, reeks of just desserts because he was very inconsiderate and didn't really show much compassion for everyone else that he was firing throughout the rest of the episode. Uh, and that's actually where the Robbie the Robot comes in. He actually ends up being like, the replacement for him <laughs> at the end of the episode. So he, he just gets a little cameo at the end. I, I actually had forgotten that I'd seen the photograph of him in the episode, which I was glad because I'd have been waiting for it all episode if I hadn't. But yeah, that's at the very, very end of the episode. So this one is... It's kind of good. And it's kind of good for basically all the reasons which I could have predicted before I watched it, and that's how relevant it is, how timely the topic is, the fact that this is not something that is aged at all, in the sense that, you know, today we're talking about AI replacing jobs, creative jobs at that, never mind stuff like factory work. So it's spread, it's become more of a problem, it's become something that's become, even like, I remember when I was younger, you'd hear a lot of people say, oh, you should learn how to use computers and code and how to fix computers because that's what the future is and you'll always have a job if you can do that. But now we're at a point now where, where a lot of those jobs are being replaced with AI and other computers <laughs> and things like that. So, you know, like it's a very relevant theme. It's a very relevant topic. I think it does some smart little touches in how it presents it. But I also think it never quite reaches special level, and I, I went into it thinking it could be a special episode because it feels like the ingredients are there for it, it just never quite completely hits. There's some footage of like a crowded cafeteria and like a crowded factory workplace. I don't know if this is shots they got quickly at some real place, or it's literally just stock footage. But of course, the actual speaking characters are very limited, because it's a Twilight Zone episode, which is fine. We effectively have Mr. Whipple, who's making all these choices, and we have the chief engineer, who runs all the employees, and then we have one of the sort of the main employees, I think the foreman was, the, was his title, uh, Mr. Dickerson, and we get kind of the reactions of these different characters to what is going on, and most of that's okay. It gets a little bit speechy, though, at one point. I think the moment in the episode where I felt like it's not quite living up to my expectations, because the opening's solid, the opening's basically a little film reel that this Mr. Whipple has made to kind of like proudly announce that they're using these computers and that, you know, in a few months time they'll cut 160,000 jobs or, or whatever it is, and he's very enthusiastic about it. And you get the initial reaction of the chief engineer who is not enthusiastic about it and is clearly immediately concerned with all of the people who are about to lose their jobs. And Mr. Whipple does not show really much concern. He sees this as efficient. He sees this as him doing his job well and that this is progress, nothing more. He says that multiple times throughout the episode. 
Where I sort of started to feel like it wasn't living up to what I was wanting from it is when we get this reaction from the next character, Mr. Dickerson, who is the, the, the foreman. And he looks pretty distraught by all this news. And we see him go to a bar. He kind of rambles a little bit to the, to the bartender. And he ends up sort of going back to the workplace, drunk, and stumbling into the floor where some of these computers have now been set up. And Mr. Whipple comes out and says, what are you doing here? You're basically trespassing. What, what, what is this? And Mr. Dickerson just kind of stands there and makes this big impassioned speech about how he's a man and he's better than metal and machine and whatever else. It goes on for like a good, I don't know, minute or so, right? But it's a long time. It's a long time for sort of an angry, drunk speech of like him just pouring out like all this philosophy about man versus machine and what his worth is. And I felt, I, this is where I was like, okay, this feels like, it, it feels a little bit less like you're doing a good job of telling a story that gets the idea across, and instead it feels like you're just having a character scream the point of the episode at me. And that is inherently less interesting, it's inherently less engaging, when instead of getting the episode because all the seeds are there, and because you're you're telling me a compelling story, it's more that the, the, the character's just giving me a speech, right? I'm being spoken to. It's like a PSA uh, or something like that. So that's a little frustrating. Uh, and also the outcome of this scene is very weird to me as well because he basically just keeps getting more and more agitated and eventually grabs a crowbar and tries to smash one of the computers, which he successfully does. The spark's coming out of it. He's made a big dent. There's a hole appearing. And the security guard just kind of freezes. So Mr. Whipple grabs the security guard's gun and shoots Mr. Dickerson. And that's kind of your big going to ad break cliffhanger, which feels like it should have mammoth consequences. But it's actually kind of weird just how little effect it has uh, once we come back after the ad break. All we really get is, is uh, the other guy, uh, the chief engineer, he comes in and says, oh, I just come back from the hospital. And Mr. Whipple shrugs it off and says, I was just protecting my property. That's got nothing to do with me. And then that's it. It's never really brought up again. And I get thematically the point of it. I get, I get once again, it's showing how little he's valuing the humans that work for him. But it, it, it it's, it's so funny, though, because the ending of the episode is designed to make you feel like it's... that this, this thing that he's so excited about, this replacing of all the workforce, eventually comes from for him. And he's replaced by a literal robot, and he's disregarded. And I felt like this painted him as such a straight villain, this moment where he shoots this guy, and then, and not even shooting the guy, the, the, the fact that afterwards he's just so unfazed by it, he's just going about his day, he's tinkering with all these buttons on his new computer, and he's saying how excited he is about how this thing can can keep track of all the workers and even as he was saying that i realized he was basically describing the job of the chief engineer and the chief engineer says oh how many jobs does this replace and mr ripple says oh you'll be happy here only replaces one your job <laughs> uh and there's a moment at the end of this scene where where the chief engineer slaps him across the face he declines his pension and his severance and slaps him across the face and says that's that's from me to you that is to show that I'm leaving here clean, which is something that you won't be able to say or something like that. Anyway, he walks out. I think, again, it's another little moment in this episode that just feels a, a little odd to me. It feels like it, it sort of turns up a little bit too much. Maybe more of a reaction from Mr. Whipple that he'd just been slapped. Uh, maybe showing him struggle, perhaps, throughout the episode that maybe some morality or some 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 guilt was starting to seep in throughout the course like maybe he was questioning if this is the right thing to do or something and I, but i think the biggest signifier of what's missing in this episode is that we get this crazy scene where all the computers start mal malfunctioning and the fancy door that's got like a, an id scanner which doesn't even seem that far-fetched or uh, high-tech by our standards lots of companies most companies i'd argue now have some kind of card scanner at doors to let people in and out they all start malfunctioning, the door starts slamming shut and open, and he starts freaking out because he can't quite control all the computers. And then the final, well not the final scene, the final scene is uh, the Rob, Robbie the robot in his office, but the final sort of proper scene where he, he shows up at the bar and the, the, the chief engineer's sitting there. 
Mr. Whipple reveals that he's been let go, that he's been fired because he couldn't sort of look after all the computers and he's been disregarded and replaced with something else. And I couldn't help but feel that this would land a lot better if we actually got to see that moment. If we actually got a scene where he went, because he mentions the board of directors, I feel like it really needed a scene of him in front of a table full of like people in business suits disregarding him and like throwing him out. I feel like that would have been far more interesting than him just sort of recounting it briefly to someone else afterwards. Maybe still have the scene where the previous character finds out that this has happened to him as well. Um, and that they're now kind of like aligned in the set, the fact that they've both been kind of kicked out because of computers. But it really needed to see, or I really need to see his reaction to finding out this news. I really need to see him dealing and struggling with this idea that he's now just been booted out the same way that he booted everyone else out. I think seeing that would have been a big deal. I think seeing these other characters be happy with what he's done, that he saved so much money by replacing everyone, and then saying, hey, we've thought of saving a bit more money, we're going to replace you as well. Like, seeing these other evil businessmen make that decision in front of him and tell him that might have done a lot to kind of like make me empathize with him and like sort of like feel bad that he's basically just become a victim of the system that he was trying to do well in. He was trying to please his masters, his masters being uh, the, the stockholders or, or the, the board of directors or whatever, right? The, 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 the capitalist machine. And he did his job well, seemingly, but then was booted out. But it also makes the previous... I mean, obviously that scene is not in the episode. I'm saying it should be there. But even without it... Finding out that he was let go does kind of make the previous scene where all the computers were malfunctioning feel just a little bit like a... I don't know, almost like they wanted some spectacle in the episode. They wanted something to feel like, oh, there's something Super Twilight Zone happening. So they wanted a scene where everything's malfunctioning and he's struggling and it's like the computers are fighting back or something in their own little way. <laughs> but it just it feels like it doesn't fit really what the rest of the episode's doing because ultimately, well, he says, I think briefly in that little final description that he was let go partly because he it was too neurotic, quote-unquote, and couldn't... You know, he was too obsessed with the machines. Like, nothing came of the fact that all the computers were malfunctioning. Like, when that started happening and he was struggling to try and fight back against them, I thought they were doing an ending where the computers were coming to life and, like, they were going to trap him in the building or something like that and, like, get some kind of, I don't know, revenge for the workers or it would just be, like, a kind of, like, a karma thing where the computers would be his demise or something. But obviously that's not where it goes, and nor should it have been where it went. I was only thinking that because of that scene, because of this scene where all the lights are blinking and the door's slamming shut, and he's struggling, he's running around trying to press buttons. Ultimately, it just feels like a scene that's there to give the episode some excitement, which doesn't really actually fit with what the rest of it or the ending even does. The ending doesn't need the excitement, the ending just needs the idea that he is let go and replaced. And for him to have to like struggle with that that realization, uh, so I think a scene of him actually being let go with some people above him not caring about him to show how every step of the ladder, every step of the food chain is equally inhumane to the layer below. I think that would have went a long way. Uh, you know, they they do one thing in the episode where they kind of they have this engineer character who's there to fix the computers mentions how how quiet and dead the, this place is. This plant is now completely empty. There's no cars in the car park. There's no one in the cafeteria. There's no life. There's no laughter. There's nothing. It's depressing. And he's actually happy to be let go when he's fired. So, and that was fine, but I, I don't know. I just, like, if, again, it felt like it was making more of a speech about, oh, what will life will be like when all the humans are gone and it's just all computers. There'll be no... You know, there'll be no love, there'll be no laughter or anything like that, right? Which is fine, but that feels, again, more like making a speech. And I feel like, again, seeing more of the, the repercussions of, of this man, Mr. Whipple, actually have to find out that he's been replaced and then having to deal with that a bit more. I also thought it was a really awkwardly rushed ending in the sense that as soon as he says his last line, Rod Serling's narration, like, hits in immediately. And it immediately fades to the office with Robbie the Robot. And it felt like a little bit rushed, like they were sort of tight on time. 
So I think the concept of this episode is great. I think what it's ultimately trying to say is is great. Like A plus for like a lasting idea that's still relevant today. But there's just some key things they could have focused on and some key moments that I think would have made it a bit more engaging as a character story about this Mr. Whipple. It's just missing the mark a little bit because it's lacking those key moments. And how, finding out after the fact that he's lost his job, the way he says it, just doesn't quite have the same impact uh, as actually seeing him lose his job. Um, or at the very least, if... if I, I, hell, even if you just rewritten the scene where he tells the, the previous like chief engineer in the bar, if you'd rewritten that a little bit so it feels more like a big deal when he finally says, like, oh, I was let go. But it, 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 I don't know, it comes out in kind of a weird, subdued way. I it just didn't quite work for me, sadly. Uh, which is not to say it's a bad episode. There's enough ideas here that it's at least an interesting episode that stands above a lot of the low-tier episodes, but sadly it's not the winner that I was hoping for based on the, the premise. But uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on on this Twilight Zone. we only got a few left. Let's have a look and see what's coming next week. Uh, Rod did come on at the end and said something about folk music, I want to say. So let's see what IMDb has to say. The episode's called Come Wander With Me, and the description reads as follows. Singer Floyd Burney searches the backwoods for new songs and finds Mary Rachel and much more deep in the Twilight Zone. Hmm. I'm going to be honest. I'm not feeling optimistic about this. Something, something about someone just looking through the woods for musical inspiration, and the photo being just this guy and woman sitting with a guitar in the forest... It's not making me excited. <laughs> it's not making. It's not getting my imagination firing as to what it could be. But we'll we'll see how it turns out. But that's next week's episode. So thank you very much for joining me. You can of course support all the content over at Patreon.com/MailFuzzTV and help keep it all coming. Wouldn't be able to do this as often as I do on both the TV and movie channel without the support via YouTube memberships and Patreon and all that kind of thing. Uh, of course, if you haven't checked it out already, I have been reviewing the 80s Twilight Zone twice a month as well. It's part of a Patreon-sponsored thing, uh, so make sure you check out my thoughts on the first four episodes, which are already out at the time of this video coming out. Uh, the next one should be very soon as well, should be in the next couple of days. So thank you very much for joining, I always appreciate it. Keep watching TV in the Twilight Zone.